The biggest decision you have to make as an investor is your investment mix. What do we mean by your investment mix? Well, simply put, there are two things you can do with your money to make it grow. You can either lend your money to someone or become an owner of a company. The lowest risk option that can help you to preserve capital is to lend money to governments or companies. The returns you receive come in the form of interest payments, and if the borrower defaults on the loan you've given them, you're near the front of the queue to creditors to be repaid. The high risk option is to buy shares in a company, or in other words, become the owner of a business. When you buy shares, you are taking an equity stake in that business, and your returns come from a mix of dividends and an increase in the share price. But of course, if the company goes bust, you're nearer to the back of the queue with creditors and less likely to get your money back. In theory, you should be rewarded for this additional risk, and this is what the industry calls the equity premium. How much you own and how much you lend is your investment mix, and ultimately, this decision is the largest single contributing factor in determining returns. A Vanguard study of over 700 UK investment funds in 2017 found that asset allocation accounted for as much as 80% of the variability of returns. Similar studies of US, Australian, Japanese, Canadian funds show similar results. What we see is that whilst the evidence clearly tells us that your investment mix is the biggest driver of returns, many investors continue to be wrongly focused on the latest fund manager, picking the right stocks, trying to time the market, so-called expert opinion and more. It's also true that many advisors put too much emphasis on the risk questionnaire alone. A risk questionnaire is a series of questions designed to determine your attitude to and tolerance of risk. The outcomes often used to determine your investment mix. There are many potential issues with this approach. We can all be inconsistent in our answers depending on our experience, our emotions on the day, or even how rushed for time we are. We're also all guilty of assessing our past investment experiences in a vacuum. But the biggest issue is that a risk questionnaire ignores your need to take risk. That is, how much return you need in order to pay for the things you want to do. So, how do you know what return you need? We adopt a top-down approach to this question, first understanding the things that are important to you, then costing them out in a cash flow model and seeing what return would be required to underpin your goals. Only then can this return be assessed against your ability to take risk, both financially and emotionally. Remember, an investment strategy is like a good diet. It's only effective if you can live with it and stick to it. Now you understand the return you need, you're able to determine where that return will be derived from, your investment mix. It's also true that any plan needs to be regularly reviewed. Your tolerance to risk and your ability to take risk will change over time. And without adapting, you'll jeopardise your financial security. So, the evidence tells us that the biggest driver of returns is your investment mix. You decide your investment mix by creating a thorough financial plan, understanding your required returns, and tempering this with your ability to take risk. If you can get your investment mix right, you're 80% of the way there.